Okay, so the fermentation of carbohydrates by microorganisms, experiment 25. All right, so metabolism. Um, we went a little bit, we went over metabolism uh, about oxidative respiration with regard to glycolysis, citric acid cycle, pyruvate oxidation, electron transport chain, and uh, oxidative phosphorylation. Um, so, so we went over all that. Um, now there are different types. There's other types of metabolisms that occur other than just aerobic respiration using the breakdown of chemicals. So, um, one of them, and there's two different like categories. There's the source of carbon, right? And then there's the, uh, source of energy. Okay. So if your source of carbon is from organic compounds, you're called heterotrophic. All right, so humans are heterotrophic because we eat, and the food that we eat provides the carbon source that we need to build any carbon molecules that we need. Um, if you get your carbon source from carbon dioxide, which is not an organic compound, um, CO2 is not organic. You need a carbon and a hydrogen to be uh, organic, I'm pretty sure. Um, but if it's carbon dioxide, then you, as your source of carbon, then you are autotrophic. So plants are autotrophic because uh, they fix carbon dioxide into sugars using photosynthesis, but photosynthesis is with regard to energy. So if you if you use light energy as your source of energy like you do in photosynthesis, then you are, are phototroph. And if you use chemicals as your source of energy, then you're a chemotroph. All right, and there's two different types of chemotrophs. All right, there are chemoorganotrophs and chemolithotrophs. So if you're a chemoorganotroph, then use organic compounds as your energy source. And if you're a chemolithotroph, then you are inorganic compounds. So humans, again, are chemoorganotrophs and heterotrophs, right? So they're chemoorganotrophs because we use the organic compounds as an energy source and as a carbon source. While plants are both autotrophic and chemolithotrophs, are, are autotrophic and phototrophs, and that they use um, carbon dioxide as a source of carbon, and then they build energy using photosynthesis, which is the light energy, uh, to fix those carbons into sugar. So, um, so there's a lot of different kind of ways that these kind of interact with each other. Um, but there's one more kind of, uh, like just kind of energy description of, of an organism that's called fastidious. Uh, and it's an organism that uses, that has a high energy requirement. Um, so just if you need a lot of energy, then you are fastidious. Um, okay, so here's the background information on uh, the breakdown of like Hall. So we talked earlier about, you know, this diagram with glycolysis, glucose coming in, leaving as pruvate, you're getting ATP and NADH. That pruvate will then go into the mitochondria, get oxidized by pruvate oxidation. It'll then go into acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA will then enter the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle will produce ATP and even more electron carriers, NADH and FADH2. Those electron carriers from glycolysis and the Krebs cycle will then enter the electron transport chain, donate their electrons to there, and then we talked about how they flow through the electron transport chain. Um, until it gets to the oxidase, and then the oxidase will then send the electrons to oxygen, right? But then that builds a proton gradient, and then the protons then flow through ATP synthase to make ATP. Um, and that is what we talked about earlier. But if there's no oxygen present, this whole entire system gets clogged, right? Because there's no oxygen to accept those electrons, the electron transport chain gets clogged, then the FADH2 and NADH can't donate the electrons, so that gets clogged. And so it goes all the way back to glycolysis. So, um, what happens is you then ferment the things that there's no, the, you then ferment pyruvate instead of oxidizing it. Um, so, so glycolysis does substrate level phosphorylation in that you have ADP and, phos and inorganic phosphate going in and leaving as ATP. Um, and you use NAD plus to drive these reactions, all right? Um, and it generates a lot of ATP, a lot of NADH, and a lot of pruvate. But the thing is, it's not enough ATP to do all the cellular work you need. So we want to make even more ATP. But the thing is, is that we, when you go through this, when you, when you go through glycolysis like this, you'll then find that you're going to use up all your NAD plus. And if you do not have any NAD plus, then it can, glycolysis cannot occur. So what we have to do is we have to regenerate NAD plus. Um, and the way that you regenerate NAD plus is by going through fermentation. 
So uh, what happens is that you produce pyruvate, and then stuff can happen to pyruvate, or it doesn't necessarily have to happen, depending on what type of fermentation you have. But uh, what happens is that this NADH right here will then reduce pyruvate. So NADH, NAD plus can be oxidized. And then now that we have more NAD plus, then we can drive glycolysis to occur. So this is like a cyclic thing to, so this is a cyclic kind of system that powers um, glycolysis right here. And then because you reduced pyruvate, you then can create your products, whether it be ethanol or lactic acid, depending on various types of fermentation. Um, but that's the way that you kind of regen that you can provide a lot of ATP because you don't need this NADH because you don't have any more electron transport chain. So you can generate a lot of ATP to do cellular work. Um, so the way that we kind of test this, oh wait, one more thing back here. Um, you can produce carbon dioxide sometimes from, so you can have pyruvate produce carbon dioxide, then you can go to something like to acetyl aldehyde or whatever it may be. Um, but sometimes there are gases produced from this process, which is going to be important. Um, so what we did in this experiment is that we had, uh, sorry, one more thing, <laughs> that the, the products of fermentation are various, are typically acidic, um, almost always, that ethanol has some acidic characteristics, and that's because you reduced the compound. And if you reduce things, then typically hydrogens go on and they can form an equilibrium. So it's typically acidic products that are produced. Okay, so what we did for this experiment was that we had a tube that contained phenol red and different types of carbohydrates. So one of the types of carbohydrates was sucrose. One was lactose and then, oh wait, this is a, okay. So this is supposed to say glucose, not sucrose. Um, sorry about that. Um, so one of them had glucose, one had lactose, one had sucrose. All right, um, so you had three different tubes and then you had phenol red in those tubes, which is the pH indicator. So at neutral pH, it is red, okay? And at basic pH, it's yellow. So if you, so if you have, oh no, no, sorry. At neutral and basic pH, it's red. And at yellow, at acidic pHs, it's yellow. Okay, sorry about that. I'm off my game right now. Um, but uh, so what happens is, so if you have acid produced, you turn yellow is effectively the takeaway from that. So um, what we did was we put bacteria into these tubes that have all these sugars and all of these, the, the pH indicators. And depending on where, depending on where you sit at the bitch is depending on which um, bacteria you use. But if the sugars were fermented, then the acids were produced right here, right? So the, so the ethanol is an acid, so the acids were produced, lowers the pH, all right? And turns the tube yellow, all right? And depending on what, another, depending Another thing we did is we had these Durham tubes in here. So you can kind of see the Durham tubes right here. These kind of, what they're doing, they're just a tube, like a little tube that's just inverted. So the, the top of, like the opening of the tube is at the bottom, okay? Um, and what it does is it catches all the gas that's produced. So we can catch this gas that's produced right here, right? So that CO2 is produced, it's going to float up into the Durham tube and have this like kind of vacancy here where this one doesn't have like a vacancy. All right, so these are kind of the results that you'll typically get in that you'll have either no fermentation occurring, which means that there's no acid that's produced, so it does not change the pH, and there's no gas that's produced, so the Durham tube's still full. You can have acid being produced, but like I said, you don't necessarily have to go through this uh, CO2 decarboxylation. You can just do, like a lactic acid fermentation doesn't produce any gas. So something like this produces acid, so lactic acid, but it doesn't produce any gas. So you can turn yellow, but um, but not have any gas in the tube. Or you can have gas in the tube like we talked about and still turn yellow because you're still going to be producing those acids like ethanol. Um, so you'll never have a case where it's red and has a bubble because the you have to produce la you have to produce some type of acid to like do this. All right. Um, you have to produce some type of gas that if you're doing fermentation, but you also, that has to always be correlated with a, um, uh, some type of acid, okay? So, the takeaway from this experiment is that cells can go through fermentation. So, don't get this confused with the hydrolysis of carbohydrates. Hydrolysis of carbohydrates has to do with cutting up polymers into monomers. What fermentation and oxidative respiration do is they take those monomers, those glucose monomers, and then they 
use those as energy. Um, and that uh, whether you do oxidative phosphorylation with all that stuff, um, or you do fermentation and you produce these acids like we did here. All right, so you can test for these. So you can test for the fermentation conditions by testing for the gas and the acid production like we did here, right? So we had a pH indicator and then we had that Durham tube. And what this does is, like I said, is that you produce, you can, it gives an indication about the physiology of the microbes. So again, it's about what genetics they have and what enzymes make up the microbes that are in these cells.